change your boots. That. I think it was a good idea, us getting a bed sit together. Oh, obviously. It's a great innovation from your point of view. Why is it such a whack in the pan for me? Because left to look after yourself, in two days you'll be covered in mould and up to your knees in bed bugs. Oh, and you're a living testimonial to thoughtfully disposed snot rags, aren't you? <laughs> look at it! Great blizzard of fagash every time you open the door. Hey. Well, you're going to have to do your share, that's all, Steve. I do my share, you just do yours. You know, we might do well to get a second-hand vacuum cleaner. Nature abhors a vacuum cleaner. Old proverb. Really? Well, I've got one for you. Am I my brother's keeper? No, I just muck his cage out in the mornings. We can't <laughs> all be perfect, Brian. No. Are you ready to go down the supermarket? Yeah, better add. Bit of a Mother Hubbard situation in there, eh? Well, come along, then. Let me put me boots on. This bird of yours, she any good at cooking? Why? You get to come round and fry us a dinner. <laughs> She's got better things to do than to come round and cook us dinners. Do you reckon she could get me, you know, fixed up? <laughs> <laughs> fixed up? Yeah, with a young, willing and able. I don't think Sonia's really like that, Steve. I don't think she'd want to fix anyone up. Fixed up. Sound like a shelf. A few screws, a couple of brackets, and there you are, fixed up. <laughs> Never mind the brackets, I just If want you've to got see... your feet in circuit, can we go? Can I push the trolley? No. no. Oh, let me push the trolley, Brian. Oh, leave it alone, will you? Hey, get some speed up and do a wheelie. I didn't come here to do wheelies. <laughs> right then. What do you want? On a sodium glutamate. We had that yesterday. We'll have it again today, can't we? I like monosodium glutamate. I would have thought sniffing aeroplane glue was more up your street. <laughs> don't get rid of your gold spot if you don't need your chemicals, Brian. Hey, what about this bird of yours, then, eh? What about her? Get it in the tomatoes. From the top, Steve, have some sense. I'm not going to meet this Sonia of yours, then. Never if I can help it. Get a packet of bran. Another one? Don't your bowels ever get a day off? <laughs> well, you'll have to pay for it. I'm not paying for half a packet of bran. I'm not going to eat. Just a minute. You're expecting me to pay for half a tin of alphabetic spaghetti that I'm not going to eat? I'll pay for it myself. Honestly, Brian, you're so childish sometimes. I'm childish? You're buying alphabetic spaghetti and I'm childish? I mean, you're out of your high chair and plastic pants now, Steve. Don't you think you're a bit old for alphabetic spaghetti? Oh, there's an age limit on the tin, is there? Alphabetic spaghetti you can't even spell. I'll get a tin of dyslexic spaghetti next time. <laughs> oh, look, essentials. <laughs> Have you got enough done? Do you reckon that'll last you till we get home? It's more economical to buy in bulk. When you're drinking it in bulk, I'd imagine it would be. Oh, all right, I'll make do. Bring her down the pub tomorrow lunchtime. Mm, maybe. I bet if the truth be told, you haven't got a bird at all, have you? I bet all you're really going out with is one of them rubber inflatables from the set. <laughs> That's right, Stephen. Started off with a football and worked my way up. <laughs> well, bring her down the pub tomorrow lunchtime and I'll see if I approve. Have you ever considered the possibility that she might not approve of you? I don't mind people not approving of me. I quite enjoy it. Oh, you are a phallicsome bundle of fun, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to get back home. Your turn to pay. Oh. Can I owe it to you? You still owe me from before. Share and share alike, Brian. What's mine is yours, you know. It's all very well saying that, but you haven't got anything. <laughs> Thanks, please. You know, you'd starve if it wasn't for me. I wouldn't. Couldn't even find your way around the supermarket without mucking something up. I could. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Who's your mate? <laughs> Sonia actually runs a playgroup, Steve. Really? Just two days a week. The children? Little children. 
And that's as well as making leather sandals? Oh, yes. That must keep you quite busy, then, running a playgroup and making sandals. Quite busy, yeah. I also make peanut butter. <laughs> you can sell yourselves it through the health food shop. Really? As well as making sandals? Oh, yes. And running the playgroup. That's very good, isn't it? Running a playgroup, doing peanut butter and making sandals. <laughs> it's just really interesting. I've got a pair of sandals. You've got a pair too, haven't you, Bri? Yes, in fact, the pair of sandals I've got back at the bedsit, Sonia actually made. Really? Well, they're a nice pair of sandals. No, really? I mean, you wouldn't get a pair of sandals like that in the shops, would you? Actually, they uh, sell them in the health food shop. Really? <laughs> Where they sell the peanut butter? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You can get everything at once, then. <laughs> Who knows? But somebody, at one time, on their way to the playgroup, might have popped into the health food shop for a jar of peanut butter and come out with a spanking new pair of sandals, eh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have noticed a lot of changes in Brian, Steve. I think you'll find that being in London has made him a, a much more together person. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's into a lot of new and exciting things now, aren't you, Brian? You see, Steve, we're very much into evening classes. Really? <laughs> That's very good. Quite a heavy scene going on at evening classes, eh, Brian? <laughs> How about you, Steve? Are you into something? Would you like to tell us what you're into? Me? Well, I'm sort of into plumbing, really. <laughs> Sonia means inside yourself, Steve. Oh, well... I'm not into all that much inside myself at the moment, but I'm definitely going to make an effort to get inside of something as soon as me gyro arrives from Social Security. <laughs> I see. So how long you two been going out, then? <laughs> oh, that's really sweet, Steve. That's really nice. What a nice thing to say, isn't it, Brian? I think your brother's really fantastic. I think you're really incredible, Steve. Always go on being yourself and promise us you'll never change. Oh. <laughs> well, what's the chortle, then? What's the big smirk? <laughs> it's nothing. We're not laughing at you. We're laughing with you, Steve. You see, Steve, Sonia and I aren't going out with each other. We never have. We don't deal in those sort of concepts. What are you doing, then? We're having a relationship. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> it means we are people rather than sexual animals, Steve. Mm. You see, I'd still feel the same about Sonia, even if she was a man. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you feel the same about her if she was a man, you must be a bit bent, Brian. That's all I can say. I don't think I'm making any effort to understand. Oh, no. Dad warned me about London. He said there'd be a nest of puffs up every lamppost. <laughs> but I never thought you'd be perched up there, Brian. Just one second. Are you hostile towards gays, Steve? Not at all. I wouldn't personally want to marry one. But if people want to come in, waddle around, waving handbags and blowing kisses at sailors, that's their business. Some of my friends happen to be gay and they don't carry handbags. What do they carry, then? Rucksacks? <laughs> well, I happen to know some gay people as well, Steve, and quite frankly, if you don't soon adopt a more tolerant and progressive attitude... Yeah? ..you might just get a bloody good hammering. Oh, now, that is tolerant, that is progressive. I'm sorry, Steve, and you might be Brian's brother, but basically you're just a provincial person. Really? Yes. Well, I'll tell you something. If you were at home right now, you wouldn't be so keen on wearing your fashionable outlook and your funny friends on your sleeve. Far from it. You'd be taking the mick out of them and pushing them into the canal, same as any other normal, right-thinking bloke with the welfare of the community at heart. I find this unbelievable! I find it absolutely incredible! Hey, you're not going. We haven't talked about fixing me up yet. <laughs> Steve was wondering if you had a friend you might fix him up with. Fixing people up is not something I'm really into, Brian. I'll maybe see you later in the week. Cheerio. Oh, Sonia. Hey, yeah, you got a charmer there, haven't you? What do you mean? Well, you and her. You're the only two people I know in London and you won't even get me fixed up. And why not? Because I'm normal. I bet if I was a queer Lithuanian leprechaun you'd take an interest. <laughs> you'd know half a dozen weird sods I could go out with. Well, thanks very much, Brian. I'll do as much for you one day. Steve. What? Just shut up. Oh, what's the matter? What have you got to be so narked about? I happen to like Sonia, and you could have behaved a damn sight better. Oh, leave it out. Some of your girlfriends were none too special. In fact, most of them got right up my nose, but I was always polite. She started it. She... Oh, don't be stupid. 
She is of a superior intelligence, not like the women you go out with, or at home in fields and anywhere else. That Sharon Jarvis, for example. Spent half her adolescence picking thistles out of the backs of her legs. <laughs> Well, let me tell you one thing, Brian. Oh, yes, you tell me one thing, Steve. In my opinion, that Sonia of yours is nothing but an out-and-out -out sued. Oh, and you've got no pretensions, have you? Sincerity runs through you just like lettering through a stick of rock. I don't dislike her, but come on. All this relationship stuff and peanut-flavoured sandals and the superiority of the bicycle and only eating meat pies that have died of natural causes. <laughs> well, it's all a big pose, isn't it? It's a put-up job. She is a bit of a pseudo. Just because something is beyond your comprehension doesn't mean to say it's you, And when it's a question of common decency, she won't even get me fixed up. And don't you poke me, Brian. Oh, get yourself fixed up, Steve. You're always telling me how great you are at it. Last of the loquacious Lotharios. Loquacious Lotharios? What does that mean, eh? They're always trying to show off. And the reason that you and her happen to get on so well, mate, is that when it comes down to it, you just happen to be a bit of a sued yourself. And maybe you just happen to be a bit thick. And maybe you just happen to be a bit thicker. And maybe you just happen to be triple thick, like a slowly coagulating banana milkshake. Oh, you really think you're something because you know a couple of big words, don't you? That's right, Steve. Revert to animal aggression. Shut your face, Brian. <laughs> hey, watch it, Steve. Watch it. Is he giving you bother? Give him a doing. Don't you think my brother like that? <laughs> Come on, Steve, let's get out of here. Hey, Brian, wasn't even looking where he was going. See the way I handled him, though? <laughs> you were really in control of the situation. Here, that's Sonia of yours. She seems like a nice girl. Do you mean that? Yeah, really. She's got a nice personality. Well, I'm glad you said that, Steve, because I wanted to like her. I mean, I'd be very happy if you got on. Hey, do you think she could get me fixed up? <laughs> <laughs> Stevie boy. So this is where it's all happening. Hello, Mike. Still slapping it on? Yeah. So you're all plumbed in now, then, eh? Yep. It's all in a day's work for Super Modge. <laughs> Here, I'll fill up a bean day. <laughs> yeah, all right, go on that five minutes, I suppose. Well, how's it going with your brother and that? All right? Taking a London man? Yeah, I think so. It's just a bigger version of home, really, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, what's, uh, what's that you're filling in, then? You applying for a job? No, it's not a job. I'm applying for a couple of women. <laughs> I've never seen any in the situation's vacant. It's a computer dating form. You fill it in, specifying the dimensions and coordinates of the ideal partner. See? Height, age, black or white, smoker or non-smoker. You stick it in the post, they run it through a computer, and in a couple of days you have all these women phoning you up wanting to go to bed with you. <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky. Oh, where's Anne? Yeah, well, when I was your age, mate, we didn't need any computers. No, it was all done by hand then, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I could chat them up a bit, son. Do you believe it? This is the modern world, though, isn't it, Mike? The computer reduces the chances of human error. I bet if you filled in one of these forms 20 years ago, you'd never have met your missus. You'd probably have found someone you liked instead. <laughs> you cheeky little devil, aren't you? Oh, so that's why you're filling it in, eh? You want to get married? Married? Blooming neck, I've only just started shaving. <laughs> no, I don't want to get married. I just want to knock a couple of birds off, that's all. Well, I was married when I was 18. At the time I was your age, mate, I had three kids. Uh, it wasn't a computer you needed then. It was a book on family planning. <laughs> Here, uh, how much is all this going to cost you? 39 quid plus VAT. Oh, that's a hell of a lot of money, isn't it? That's 12 months' worth of introductions, though. If you average it out per head, it's quite reasonable. Supposing you get 15 willing women, it's only about £2.50 each. That's a little more than the price of four pints of lager. And if that isn't value for money, I don't know what is. I'll say this for you. If your plumbing's aren't as good as your mathematics, you're never going to be out of a job. <laughs> oh, well, come on, better get on, I suppose. Yeah, all right. I'm going for the maturer woman as well. Oh, good for you, son. Uh, oh, all right, is it? Yeah. You've got a bit of work left there, Stevie boy. <laughs> Would you like to then, Sonia? I don't know, Brian. Perhaps it's too soon. We have known each other for eight and a half months. It's not how long, Brian. It's whether it's right for us. I mean, only if you want to. 
If you don't want to, I wouldn't want you to either. I'm not sure that you want to. I think I would like to, yes. Because it's me or just because it's someone? Oh, no, because it's you. I wouldn't want to with just anyone. I wouldn't want to with just anyone either. But you want to with me? But where can we go? Well, there's a bed sitter. What about Steve? He's always around. Oh, he'll be all right as soon as he's made some friends of his own. Does he ever go out in the evening? Yes, he does go out. Just he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I take care of things. I wouldn't want him to know oh, that... Oh, he needn't know. I'll sort something out. Next week, Sonia. Next week? Yeah, something to call the guy. think of the right ingredients for a romantic evening. What? What have you got? I've got a bottle of wine, a Kate Bush record, and a copy of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. <laughs> well, the bottle of wine sounds safe. Oh, look, here's your brother. Hello, Brian. Hello, Steve. Do us a pint of bitter, would you? I've got you a drink. Cheers. Have you doing a bit of shopping? Oh, just a bit. What you got in there, then? Nothing much. A few things. What have you been buying? Oh, nothing special. A couple of bits and pieces. Oh. Ah, uh, Steve. You going out at all this weekend? I might be. Why? Are you? I don't know. Could be. Are you? Why? Do you want the bed sitter to yourself for anything? No, no, not specially. Did you? No, not particularly, no. Not unless you happen to be going out. Are you going out? I might be. Are you? Did you want me to? No, no. <laughs> Did you want me to? No, not at all, no. <laughs> You're having Sonia around this weekend, aren't you, you dirty <laughs> soul? What you like to do? What's in your carrier bag, then? Nothing of interest to you. Oh, tell me what's in yours and I'll tell you what's in mine. Bottle of Risling, a Kate Bush record, and the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. <laughs> eh? Poems. Oh. What's in yours? Packet of fag status quo and a bottle of rough cider. Packet <laughs> of fag status quo and a bottle of rough cider. Where did you meet her, Steve? Did she fall off the back of a motorbike? <laughs> status quo only happened to be one of the best rock bands going. That's all. It's hardly background music for what you've got in mind, though, is it? You might as well get a recording of old steam trains and play that. <laughs> it's better than Kate Squawky Bush. There's nothing wrong with Kate Bush. No, nothing that Anna couldn't put right. <laughs> I'm not asking you to listen to it. I just dropped another decency to get out when I bring Sonia round. Don't worry, Brian. The prospect of listening to you two rummaging about in the twilight and grunting down your wine bottle doesn't appeal to me in the least. Good. I'd rather be at a status quo concert with my head stuck in one of the speakers. Right, well, I'll see you later then. Go to a late night film and don't get back until after 12. Tonight? I'm bringing mine round tonight. Yours? My computer date. Well, you'll just have to change it. I'm not changing it. Why should I? You change yours. Look, Steve, I've made arrangements. Well, I've made arrangements. I've made concrete arrangements. I've made reinforced concrete arrangements. <laughs> you can't make reinforced concrete arrangements. It's a new line in arrangements that I happen to have cornered the market in. Now, look, Steve, I'm older than you. So what does that make you, apart from not as young as I am? I accept more responsibility. Well, maybe so, but I'm better looking. My name is on the red book. My name's on my birth certificate. It's impossible to have an intelligent conversation with you. Then let's have an unintelligent one, same as usual. Oh, you think you've got an answer for everything, don't you? You've got a question for everything and all. Well, I'm not changing my plans. And I'm not changing mine. And all four of us will be in the same room, won't we? I look over every couple of minutes, see how you're getting on. <laughs> look! Why don't you just divide the evening between you, eh? Eight to ten, ten to twelve. Then you'll both be happy. Then you'll stop arguing. Then I won't have to call the manager to have you both thrown out. Sorry. Mm. Sorry. We'll do that then, eh? I'll have the early shift. Right. <laughs> Good, right. Well, while I'm here, do you want serving? Yeah, it gives a couple of halves. Tap. So what's this girl of yours like then, Steve? You've not mentioned her before. Is she nice? What's she look like? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't met her yet. <laughs> Hello, Brian. 
And while I'm out, don't use my glasses and don't tamper with any of the things on my side of the table. I don't want your stuff. I've got my own things. Do you think it looks nicer with two fags sticking out or just the one? <laughs> I think it would look nice if you got rid of them all together. You're a fool to smoke. Now listen, Steve, you'll be out by half past ten at the latest and don't get back until half one at the earliest. Go to a late night film. What are you wearing that thing for? So we recognise each other. <laughs> I'm taking Sonia to a meal while you're, um... What's the matter, Steve? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. There's something wrong. What's the matter? Well, I'm a bit worried. About tonight. Why? What's there to worry about? Well, the thing is... I've never done it before. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. Don't know what to say. No. Because if you've never done it before, Steve, you must have spent an awful lot of time on your own in the back of your van. <laughs> I don't mean never done it before at all. I mean never done it before in a proper room, with all the trimmings. What trimmings? Well, a bed. <laughs> so what's the complication? A room's much the same as a van, you know. Admittedly, you don't get owls hooting and the police rapping on your windscreen asking to see a driving license. <laughs> it's the etiquette, though, the protocol. I know how to conduct myself with good grace in a van or a field, or around the timber yard at the back of the trading estate. <laughs> timber yard at the back of the trading estate, God help us. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I don't know if your life's been a tragedy or a bloody farce. So it's pathetic. Where else could I have gone? You could have gone without. The human race started in the open air, you know. Rabbits don't have double beds. <laughs> Hedgehogs don't have divans. You don't get stoats and weasels cruising up and down the motorway booking into cheap motel rooms under assumed names. So what's the problem? Nothing. I don't want your help. Come on. Well, before you can, in the bed, you've got to get in there first, haven't you? Well, most people do. Some couples do prefer to get on different trains heading in opposite directions, but getting into the same bed's still very popular here and there. <laughs> you don't want to help me, do you? You just want to sit there taking the mick. I will help you, but I can't help you if I don't know what your problem is. Well, that's what's bothering me. Getting into the bed. I mean, how should you go about it? Well, what you do, Steve, is to approach it like this. Lift your leg up, like this. <laughs> Put your foot on it, like this. Bring over the other leg, and there you are. Would you like to have a go? You're a stupid pillock, Brian. <laughs> You're a thick, stupid pillock. Oh, come on, Steve, I'll answer your question. Come on, you're going to have to meet her in a minute. Well, do I get him first, or does she get him first, or what? Well, I don't know the answer to that, Steve. All I can say is, if you can manage not to think about it, it'll be all right and it won't matter. Oh, cheers, Brian. I think you're being extravagantly optimistic, though. You haven't even met her yet. I'll see you. Hey! <laughs> Brian! Me sock! What am I gonna do? Well, whatever else you take off, leave on your shoes. Hey? It's Veronica. Hey? You know, computer dates. Oh. Well, aren't you going to get in? Yeah. You don't mind coming here first, do you? I thought we could have a... a drink and a chat and go on to the film later on. Yes, why not? 
Would you like to sit down or take your coat off? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> well, uh, Veronica, I never expected you to have your own car. Very nice. Can I offer you a glass of cider? I think I'd prefer the wine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just open the bottle. Shall I put on a record while you do that? Oh, please do. I don't know if you like status quo. I uh, think we'd do better with some Kate Bush. Oh, Omar Khayyam. You read poetry. Er, uh, yeah, old Omar. Yeah, it's his limerick. <laughs> It's his limericks I like the best. <laughs> you want him. <laughs> this is your first computer date, is it? Uh, no, it's not my first. Oh, still to meet the ideal partner, eh? The ideal partner isn't necessarily what I'm looking for. <laughs> Would you like a woodbine? <laughs> I normally have the tip, but these were on special, so I got them a bit cheaper. Not for me, thanks. Would you like to take your coat off? No, I'm still a bit chilly, thanks. Of course. The ideal partner isn't what I'm looking for in that sense, either. I'm not really into... Well, I mean, what I'm into is relationships. Really? Irrespective of who or what. They're all welcome to come round, sit down, Open a bottle of cider, smoke a few woodbines, more wine. What age group did you specify on your form? Over 30, under, under 40. What did you put? 18 to 25. <laughs> I share this with my brother. He'll be back at half past 10. My husband gets home about then. Oh, you're married. Yes, he's in computers. Oh, well then. <laughs> he works late a lot, you see. Does he? I can tell what you're thinking, Steve. You're thinking that tonight is going to be your lucky night. Am I? Well, I've got a surprise for you. It is. <laughs> what I liked best about the film was the way it transformed a very personal emotion into a, a global, universal concept of... of awareness. Sonia. Brian. No, don't put on the light. I can open the wine. I don't think I need any more. No, all right, Sonia. We'll just... shall we? And I want you to know, Brian... Yes, Sonia? ...that whatever happens tonight, I'll still respect you in the morning. But, Sonia, I'll still respect you too. Brian. Sonia. Seem to have been waiting such a long time. Yes, we have, Brian. Now! <laughs> Hello, Brian. Steve! Brian! Sonia. <laughs> 